Hey everyone and welcome to another Nielsen networking video. In this video I'm going to show you how to download, install, and then configure VirtualBox. VirtualBox is a free to use open source virtualization platform from Oracle. Um, and once we get VirtualBox up and running and everything's good there, I am then going to show you so kind of two steps. The second step will be we're going to go out and we're going to download uh, Kali Linux and we're going to go then install Kali Linux inside of VirtualBox. So by the end of the video, the goal will be to have you understand how to download, install, configure not only VirtualBox, but then how to actually install a virtual machine inside VirtualBox. So that is our goal. Um, and let's just get to it. First thing we're going to want to do is open up a web browser and head out onto virtualbox.com. And when it loads, you're going to want to click the button in the middle. This may change by the time you view this video. They may have it somewhere else, but this is where it is as of today. And we're going to go here. And here you're going to need to pick the platform for the device you're going to install it on. Now I'm on a Windows machine, so I'm going to select Windows host right here and let that download. But if you happen to be on a Mac or uh, Linux or several different um, distributions they support, um, you could go ahead and download those versions. So we'll wait for this to download. And it looks like it's almost done. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go here and go to show in folder. You can obviously go there any way you want to as long as you get to the installer. And now that we're here, we're gonna go and right click and we're gonna do run as administrator. And you're going to want to go ahead and just hit next on the, the initial screen. And then here you're going to go ahead and hit next unless you need to change where you're going to install VirtualBox. I only have one drive here, so I only have a C drive. Uh, but you may have an external or maybe you have a secondary. You know, you have your operating system on one volume and you might have your uh, data or your applications on a different. So whatever your use case might be, you may want to relocate where you're going to install this. You are also given the option later on if you want to install the virtual machines in a different location. So you could install VirtualBox, you know, on your main drive if you want or another drive and then put the virtual machines on a completely separate volume. Um, so keep that in mind. This isn't set in stone. This is just going to be where the actual hypervisor for um, VirtualBox is going to be installed. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And then here, it's asking you, um, well, it's not asking you, it's warning you that you may have an interruption um, while installing it. And this is due to the networking side of VirtualBox that's installed. It may, um, while it's being configured, disconnect your uh, local area connection because it needs to set up its own, that kind of, um, it sets up a virtual switch, if you will. So you're not actually running off your actual network, you're running off the virtual network. Um, so you can go ahead and just hit yes here. And then what it's telling you here is that it's missing some dependencies, meaning it doesn't have two of the um, needed um, dependencies to, in, to complete the installation. Now it offers to go out and download them for you, which I would suggest you do. The only reason you wouldn't want to is either, you know, you don't trust that it's gonna download it. Well, at this point, if you're already installing VirtualBox, hopefully you trust them. Uh, um, more of a concern would be you're worried that you have software that installing these, or, or maybe you actually have them installed and you need them at a certain version. Um, that could cause a conflict. So just an FYI heads up there. That's why you're getting this warning here. So just if that's a concern, you may want to um, do some more research before you continue with the installation. I don't have that concern, so I'm hitting yes. And then you get to the final screen that's going to tell you it's going to do it. And in, if you hit install, it will go ahead and begin the install. And this goes relatively quick, so I'm going to go ahead and stay here for you. And as you can see, it's done. So we'll go ahead and click and we'll open it up. And here we go. I'm going to go ahead and minimize that down. And there's our virtual box. All right. Now that's all fine and dandy. Uh, and this is actually specific to my PC I'm on. So you don't, you should not see this. If you do, you probably will want to go ahead and reinstall virtual box, but you should not see that. That is specific to mine because I'm actually running a virtual machine for the video. Um, so anyway, that's a whole nother story. You should not see that. Um, so now we have it. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to need to go out and find some kind of uh, operating system that we want to install. And like I said, 
I'm going to go with Kali Linux. It's a Linux distribution that is open source, so it's free to use. And I personally like it because it aligns with a lot of what I do, and it's heavily minded on security. So, you know, there's going to be their vulnerability scanning tools. There's going to be penetration testing tools. You know, there's going to be a lot of, like, tools you could test um, just to see how a password uh, brute force attack worked. There's a lot of tools that are very interesting to me um, because it's what I do most of. <laughs> so it, it, it's a great distribution, and I highly recommend it if you want to get started in Linux and you want to play around and, um, you know, you have an interest in cybersecurity. It's, it's, it's the distribution to go with. So... How do we get Kali Linux? That's a great question. And what we're going to do is we're going to go out to our web browser again, which I already have here. And instead of virtualbox.org, we're going to go to Kali.org. And I will put both Kali.org and virtualbox.org. I know they're relatively easy to remember, but I'll throw them in the, um, the description for you. So what we're going to want to do here is we're going to go ahead and click download. And when you first see the page, it can be a little overwhelming but you really only need to focus on these two options here. And the major difference in these is gonna be um, the installer image is an ISO file. It would be like having a Windows install disk. You know, if you're running a Windows 10 install ISO, that's the exact process you're going to get. You're going to get the welcome to uh, Kali Linux, and then it's going to make you select your keyboard layout, you know, your language, your time zone, all that stuff. You're literally, there's no difference with this installation other than that you're installing it on a virtual machine than if you were installing it on a physical machine. Now, the virtual machine image is an actual pre built image. Think of um, like a, it, what it's actually, it's, it's known as a, like a, a, an image because it, it takes a copy of the hard drive of the whole entire system that's there, all the configuration that is in that operating system, and allows you then with VirtualBox to click on and add that as a pre-built system so you don't have to go through the adding, the keyboard layout, the um, partitioning. It does it all for you. The downside to that is you're kind of stuck with whatever they decided for hard drive space. Um, you know, you can modify the memory a little bit. You can modify the... Um, CPUs a little bit, but by default, you're a lot more limited in what you get. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go with the installer image. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to scroll down and we're going to want to hit 64 bit and then we're going to need to download it. So I'm going to go ahead and download it. And there it goes. And I'll come back here once this is done. Alrighty, it looks like it finished downloading. So what we're going to do now is go back to VirtualBox and we're going to set this up so we're going to do new and then i'm going to name this kali linux and then here's where you could change if you wanted it stored somewhere else you would then hit other and navigate to wherever you wanted it um, i don't need it moved so i'm just going to leave it there uh, let's see here we got to find it it's in the downloads because we just downloaded it here it is and let's go ahead and hit next. Here's where you're going to want to set the memory um, and the CPU cores allotted to it. I'm going to set mine to one gig um, just because I don't have a lot of resources on this machine I'm using for this video. Uh, so we're going to give that a gig. We'll leave it at one there. Then we'll um, be able to create the hard, di oh, hard drive. This is a good size for Kali Linux 25. You could probably get away with 20, um, but I, I would just leave it at 25 as a minimum. You do not want to click pre-allocate full size. The reason being, um, if you do that, and then let's say it never goes above 10, you've wasted 15 gigs that you'll never get back because you cannot shrink it. You can only expand the drive. Um, and if you had an existing hard disk, you could add that as the hard drive, but um, I don't, and you likely won't either, especially if this is a fresh install at VirtualBox. And here you get the summary, and we're going to go ahead and hit finish. And once we're done here, on our right, you can see this is all the virtual hardware. Now, if we made a mistake and we're like, oh, no, we need a, we needed two gigs of memory, we actually can go back in here by right-clicking right and hit settings. And then you would go to system, processor, um, and, you know, you can see you can do all three here. You could also go down to storage. This is showing the Kali Linux ISO because that's what's going to boot. Uh, you don't want to change this or you're going to get a... Um, 
like a no boot disk found and you're just going to sit there on a black screen and you're going to be miserable. Uh, you could add additional network adapters if you needed to. I'm just going to stick with one. You could uh, uncheck this if you didn't want the virtual machine to go online or or like immediately when it boots up. You can uncheck that. I'm not, I'm not too worried about that. Uh, and then you could change um, display, how much video memory and stuff like that. I'm just going to go ahead and leave this default. Obviously, I don't have multiple monitors or anything. Um, so I'm happy with it as it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start it up. And you can actually start this a few ways. You can right click right here, go to start. You can click on this guy or you can simply double click. And that's what I'm going to do. That's just what I'm used to doing. Um, it's going to bring up the window over here. This is kind of like a preview. We're going to get the splash screen for VirtualBox. Then we're going to get the uh, loading screen for Kali Linux. And it's asking if you want to do a graphical install. When I click inside here, it's going to ask me if it wants us to capture the uh, mouse. And it's just saying that um, by doing this, it's going to need you to click right control to uncapture the mouse. So I'm going to have to hit that. And then we're going to have to go over here. And we're going to do a graphical install. And we're going to go and let it boot up. You're always going to get these little warnings here. This is kind of a Linux thing. It's, it's just looking for certain um, mount points. Don't worry about that. And what we want to do is we're going to go ahead. I get rid of this. And we're going to hit continue. Oh, I, should, I should tell you what that is. This is just your uh, language. I'm in English. If you wanted to change your language, here's where you would do it. Then it's going to ask you for your time zone. It's actually actually going to ask you more specifically where your time going, like East Coast, West Coast later on. For now, just hit um, United States if you're in the United States or anywhere else um, if you're not in the United States. And then this is your key map uh, or your keyboard layout. I'm going to do American English. You could pick whatever you wanted. It's going to detect the hardware. It's going to go through a couple loading screens. I'm going to wait until it gets to the next prompt, which should be our um, host name. All right, I'm going to resume here because we should be near the point where it's going to ask for the host name. And here we go. And I am just going to name it, if I type clicked into it, make sure you click into it. I'm just going to name it Kali hyphen um, network. There we go, Nielsen Network. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Continue. I do not have a domain. If you did, here's where you could add it. You could enter like a um, .com, .net, whatever. Um, or if you had an internal custom one, you could do a dot, you know, like whatever. So I'm not going to do that. And then it's going to ask me for a new user. So I'm going to do the Nielsen Network uh, Kali user. And then it's going to say this is acceptable and reasonable. And then you're going to go ahead and put in a password twice. And that should be the same. Go ahead and hit OK. Now it's asking you for more specific of your time zone. I'm just going to leave the Eastern time zone. And now what it's going to do is it's going to want to partition some disks for us. So I'm going to say use the entire disk. You could choose um, to set up encryption if you wanted to or not. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as it is. And I'm going to say use the whole entire hard disk there. And I'm going to say all files in one partition. You could separate it into multiple partitions, like old school Linux used to do this. I'm just going to put it all in one. Uh, and then it's going to want us to create a um, swap file and then a primary um, partition. We're good. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to say, are you really OK? I'm going to say, yes, let's make these changes. At this point, if you were on a virtual machine or a physical machine and you had something on the disk, it is going to get wiped because they're going to break all the partition tables and recreate them right here. It's going to do that. And then it's going to download and install the base system. And I'll come back to the video in a second when it's done. And then at that point, we should get to actually beginning the installation. OK, so here we are at the uh, desktop selection. And you have a few options here. You could just go with the default um, Kali Linux desktop environment. If you wanted to, you could go with GNOME. You could go with KDE Plasma. I'm not really sure what Plasma is. I'm assuming it's the most recent version of KDE. Um, but GNOME and KDE, are, they're kind of like Windows um, customizations. If you've ever used back in the day, it was like the cool thing to customize your desktop. It, that's what they are. Um, I shouldn't minimize them because there's actually like a, a cult following for each each one of them, but um, that's what they are. I'm going to go ahead and leave it uh, with 
those and I'm also going to leave it with the tools, the top 10 most popular tools and the default um, recommended tools, just so I can kind of show you what all Kali Linux can do. If you didn't want those, you could. If you were, if you were setting up a very hard end Linux, Kali Linux box, you would also probably want to disable all desktop features and just load the tools or heck, you might even want to install the tools on your own. Um, but that kind of defeats the, the point of a Kali Linux installation. So anyways, at this point, I am going to have, uh, go ahead and click continue. And then the long process of the install will begin. When I say long, it will be about 15 minutes. So I'll uh, come back to you when this is done. Okay. So it looks like we are at the uh, grub boot loader um, prompt. What this means is it's asking you, hey, do you have any other operating systems on this drive? Um, and if so, be warned that if you install um, grub, it's going to overwrite those. So you wouldn't be able to get, like if you had Windows and you were trying to install on the same physical hard drive or virtual hard drive, this boot loader will overwrite that. So you would need to go and hit no, and then you need to go in and set it up where you could dual boot those. Uh, for this, video we're not this is going to be our primary drive and our only operating system at this point uh, probably forever so I'm just gonna hit yes it's okay and then I'm gonna have to tell it where to go and it's gonna go to our only disk so you're gonna want to select the disk that shows up here unless you you um, when you were creating your install you had multiple you'd want to pick whatever one you want as your boot disk uh, and then hit continue and then it's gonna go ahead and install that it's gonna finish up the installation and here it goes. It says the installation is complete. It is time to boot into our new system. So I'm gonna, we don't need to install or uh, remove any media or anything. We're good. We're just gonna go ahead and hit continue. And come on. It's gonna go ahead and shut down and then it's gonna reboot. And when it comes back up, we should see um, a Kali Linux splash screen. Well, first we'll see the virtual box and then we're gonna get this. It's gonna say it's gonna time out. Oh, we're going to get this again, the capture screen. You could click the, if you didn't want to see that every time, you could click the don't show me anymore. Um, and then it's going to sit here for a second and it's going to start to boot. And you can actually see if you hit escape during this, you can actually see it boot up and it goes relatively quick. In the old days, that prompt where you'd see all those okays would take a while um, and it kind of would give you any errors there. They would show actually failed and it would show you during the boot process what wasn't loading. So anyway, just a little bit of information for you if you care. Uh, and then here we are, we're going to go with our user we set up and the password we set up, if I remember this correctly. And it looks like we're in. And we'll let it sit for a second and then we'll do some testing. All right, first things first, I'm going to make this a little bigger so it's a little easier to see. Shut it out here. And let's go ahead and start with a terminal and we'll test uh, ping it out. Let's ping Google. Yay, we're good there. Let's ping Ford.com. We're good there. So we're getting name resolution. Feeling pretty good here. We're going to exit out of there. Let's go ahead and just open up uh, Firefox here. And let's go to, let's go to Google.com again. So we're good there. How about Disney? in case anyone wants to see if uh, what's going on in Disneyland. Um, okay, so it looks like it's loading. Um, as you can see, you could always, you know, you're, let's say you're, you have something else going on in your primary desktop. You just go ahead and minimize this down, you minimize this down, and now you're back at your normal desktop. And you could, you know, go up here, and you could then, you know, you could go to Ford.com on this. So, you know, your, your regular desktop is still functioning just as everything. And you could come back here and look what's going on in your actual virtual machine. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, as far as some of the tools provided by Kali Linux, I'm not going to go too in-depth into this. This would be a whole nother video. But if you go up here, you can kind of see what's here. So if you were to go to one of these menus, let's say you wanted to go on forensic. They're going to give you um, applications that are for forensics. Or let's say you wanted to do some sniffing or, snoof, or spoofing. You could do that. Or password attack, you want to do some brute force, you know, you got John the Ripper right here. Um, or Hashcat, whatever you want to run. Uh, and then there's some database, web tool, you know, it, it's all there. Burp Suite is actually pretty cool. If you've never used that, it can um, show you what's going on behind the scenes on a website. Pretty awesome. Uh, and then there's just a bunch of other stuff. So that's all, all included in it. It's all open source. It's all free to use. Um, use it wisely, not uh, nefariously. And... Um, 
I think that pretty much covers it for Kali Linux to get this installed. This was our goal. It's here. Um, how about I just show you how to shut it down and bring it back up just for giggles. So you get a few options here. You could restart it. You could log out. We're just going to go ahead and shut down. Obviously, you could do the hybrid sleep, hibernate, and suspend. We're just going to shut it down, and I'll show you what happens. And you can actually close out of this window. And, well, okay. I guess I jumped the gun. It wasn't quite shut down yet. Still says running. We'll wait till it's done. And now it's powered off. So now we can close out of that window. And this is the website we don't care about. You go back to our virtual box. And here's our machine. Just sitting there all great. For whatever reason you needed to delete this, you could right click on it and do remove. If you remove only, it removes just like showing it. It doesn't actually remove the virtual machine, if you will. You just won't see it. It's kind of think of it as you're removing it from the uh, indexing but it's still there in the archive if you will so so the, the data is there but there's nothing telling you it's there so you'd have to go back and you'd actually have to click add browse to it find the vm file and add it and then it would show up again so to end it why don't we go ahead and start it up one more time just to make sure we're still working and while that's doing its thing again i'll get the prompt because i didn't do it you know what i'll just go ahead and get that out of there this is the timeout again remember it's going to go after five seconds auto boot into Kali Linux it goes pretty quick compared to the old school days Linux would take quite a while to boot up uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say thank you for the mouse integration but I don't really care and here we are and if you uh, if you needed to shut it down again you don't even need to log in you can do it from here which I'll do and that's about that uh, if there are any questions or comments, please throw them below in the, in the comments, and I will try my best to respond. If you enjoyed this video, I would greatly appreciate a like. We are a new channel. I plan on following this up with actually how to install um, VMware Workstation Player, which is another free-to-use virtualization platform. Um, honestly, it's my preferred platform. Uh, uh, the downside to what Workstation is, is actually that it only allows you one VM um, on at a time. Where with VirtualBox, you could now go out and create, let's say you wanted a Windows VirtualBox, you could do that. You wanted to get Mac, you could do that. Um, so it gives you many options. Where with the VMware version that we um, will go over in another video, it only allows you one at a time, where you could have all those on at once. So again, if you enjoyed that, smash that like button. If you want to see more content, which I will be busting out, I promise. I know you hear that a lot on YouTube, but I, I will. I've already put out about 20 videos in the last week and a half, and I plan to keep at it. Um, have a great day. Talk to you later.